Mr. V. Vedanathan is right here to answer all the questions that shareholders and viewers are wanting to, uh, you know, ask him regarding this quarterly number. Uh, Mr. Vedanathan, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you know, it's kind of repeating. The quarterly numbers are. Uh, shareholders are getting a view that this is the third or fourth time in a quarter that the profitability has been hit due to provisions. This time it's about the telecom company Vodafone that you provided for almost 50% of the exposure there. How did you arrive upon that 50% number uh, in particular and how bad is the situation on some of your stressed accounts? Uh, you know, this was uh, that sort of a decision which was on the edge actually. Uh, on one hand, the cash flow of the company are strained uh, for making fresh investments for growing the telecom company. Uh, number two, the you know uh, the the promoters themselves are talking about the fact that uh, they might shut down if they if they're forced to pay the AGR dues. So how can a responsible company really ignore uh, such a material information in terms of market news going around? So we actually felt that it is important to recognize the stress in the sector and more particularly to recognize the stress in this particular company on our books. We just want to have a clean book and going forward. At the same time, uh, it is also true that the government uh, does not want uh, uh, this company to close down. Uh, it is also true that uh, India needs a vibrant uh, uh, telecom sector and it also has a significant ownership of both Vodafone and the Billa Group. So if you think of it, it's a very even decision. So in a cloudy environment, we decided best to go 50% and, and take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vedanathan, you know, the shareholders actually want to understand from you that where are we right now as far as the provisioning cycle is concerned. Till last quarter to on operating level, you had actually broken even 100 crore PBT. But if every quarter provisions like these keep coming up, then your profitability can remain clouded for, net profit can remain clouded for a few more quarters. So can you give some color, how long can it last and where are we on the provisioning cycle right now? First of all, thank you for asking this question. A lot of people are asking this question, how long, right? We've got three, four quarters of taking provisions for uh, so-called legacy wholesale loans. So I, I acknowledge that issue. Uh, I must uh, say that we put this in three buckets and I must uh, share this for the benefit of the viewers. Uh, we had exposure to Devan Housing, I'll tell you names. We had exposure to Devan Housing and Reliance Capital to the extent of 1,500 crores. We have taken a 75% provision against these. Yes. We believe that's safe. We don't expect to take any further hits. We also had exposure to, uh, uh, to a company called Sikal, which is South India, and got stuck in unfortunate circumstances, 100 crores. We recognized it. We've taken 50% provision for that. Thirdly, we have exposure to one infrastructure company, which is a toll road operating company. That exposure is 963 crores. That's paying us, but SME too. It's delayed and continuously delayed. We did not want to not recognize it, rather we wanted to recognize it, so we've taken a 15% provision for that. Now, these three have been disclosed. Now, additionally, there are infrastructure loans of 1,191 crores, which are in various stages of, 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 uh, uh, of delinquency, if at all, many of them are current. We have taken a 53% provision, provision for that. All in all, put together, if you sum this up, mm -hmm. the total stressed book as we call it, the Devan, Reliance Capital, it's mm -hmm. all put together, is 3,487 crores. We have taken a 51 percent provision for that. We think this provision is appropriate for this book. It's more specifically, if you're asking me next quarter, the quarter after that, are we planning to take any more provisions to the account? The answer is, as far as we can see now, the answer is no. So chances, the probability of incremental provisioning on the stress book which you have? On this stress book, because you already have 51%, right. it's unlikely that we will take it. A little bit, you know, we're running a large, you know, 50,000 crore book, you know, 100, 200 crores per quarter of provisions is, is normal, that can come. But no big ticket item like a, uh, you know, like a Divan of 600 crores, or Reliance Capital of 900 crores, or a Vodafone of 3,200 crores, we don't have any more of those big items to bother about. I was looking at uh, your watch list also, which you have shared in the presentation. Uh, there are a couple of accounts there, anywhere between 300, 400 to 900 on the higher side, which you spoke, spoke about. From your infrastructure book, are there any accounts which are at risk? That's what I pointed out to you. So when you add up all these numbers, uh, this uh, uh, 3,500 crores of uh, infrastructure plus all this put together okay. uh, and more specifically infrastructure book we talked about is the 1100 crore 11. book mm -hmm. we have 51 percent provision okay we think it's safe the issue the way we deal about this is that if we have an issue i want to look at the issue 
fairly and squarely in the face and I want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't deal with it, there will always be confusion in the marketplace. For example, on Vodafone, people did, just did not know what our exposure was. There was speculation. And I don't want our investors to be speculating. I just want to tell them the truth. Mr. Vayantana, uh, I just want to ask you, you know, at uh, the NBFC uh, entity earlier, the profitability of the group was very healthy. And it was, in fact, uh, the CAGR was very high double-digit CAGR. You mean uh, Capital First? Yes, at Capital First. Yes, 55%. Yes. So, uh, you know, when you merge this entity into the bank, uh, do you sometimes or some of your large shareholders question you on the decision which you made because it has completely eroded the profitability prospects at least as we stand today if you look at the last couple of quarters and the outlook has dimmed quite a lot on profitability so do they question you do you look at your decision see that decision has passed you know, it's been a year and a half now uh, but uh, you know i should not be uh, selective in picking the good spots of what we go, uh, got from idfc bank as a merger and only you know regret uh, the issues it comes as a package and 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 uh, it's true that we had these four legacy accounts which we had to take through the provisions account i believe once we are done with it we'll be done we can look ahead in fact this quarter i actually think of it as a quarter after which i can look ahead now therefore when we see these issues i cannot not respect the fact that this is a banking license a lot of plumbing work had already been done technology had been built it was right for me to scale it up I have to appreciate that also. It would be unfair for me to just pick on the bad loans and not appreciate the, uh, the good things that came with the merger. And the what came was good, was really good. Mr. Vanathan, uh, you know, you're also transforming the overall complexion of the loan book. And we have seen it happen. Uh, the proportion of loan book on the retail side is going up, whereas you're dialing down the proportion of wholesale lending book. Uh, how is the rate of growth happening in both the sides? And how is this transformation taking shape? You know, something dramatic is happening underneath, which the normal eyes can't see. Most people are seeing the loan book is flat. At one, you know, we started the merger at one lakh six thousand crore. The loan book is still one lakh six thousand crore. But the four quarters, position is four quarters. So you may look at it and say, "My God, there's nothing happening here." But that's not true. If you see the retail book, was at merger was thirty six thousand crores. Today it's fifty two thousand crores. Every quarter we're growing by four thousand crores. At the same time, the wholesale book is coming down to 4,000 crores a quarter. I think it's a very fine strategy that goes behind it. And the benefit is showing immediately what has happened to NIMS. Uh -huh. Pre-merger, our NIM was 1.56%. Today, the NIM is like close to 3.8%. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so basically, uh, the, the benefit of uh, this change is beginning sure. to show very well.